Well, I'm pleased to announce that I've come before you with what may be very close to the final iteration of the plans for the spec house that we're building. Now, we're not breaking ground yet, but I'm showing you the plans that are on the engineer's desk. We've hired Dave Thomas, Thomas Engineering, here in Roseburg, to do, and he's working on it now, the structural calculations and to make all the recommendations and specify all the spans and the materials and everything that pertain to this vastly improved set of drawings. And the reason it is vastly improved is because of your suggestions. And let me show you what we've decided and give some credit where credit is due to several people who reached out of their own free will and I don't know if they pulled us back from a brink or just made some really, really positive suggestions that we've employed. We knew when we put these plans up on the channel that they weren't quite complete, but we didn't know how incomplete. And then the comments and the suggestions started pouring in like 30 seconds after we uploaded it, it seemed like. And of the hundreds and hundreds of great ideas that came in from the hive mind of the channel, several of them began to sort of float to the top and become recurring themes. But of the hundreds of you who made these comments, three individuals have to be recognized because your comments were, I think, in the rear view mirror, your comments were pivotal to the, to the outcome of the, of the project. And the first was from a woman whose name I don't remember, and I am sorry, ma'am, but I don't have your name. But you sent just a really convincing description of how incomplete that upstairs utility room was. The laundry room that we have built in up there and the significance that a well laid out laundry room has to a woman when she walks through a house and thinks about living there. And uh, you sold me, you sold me and we adjusted the design accordingly, thank you. The second one was to Dave Heil. Now Dave Heil and I went to school together at Glide High School about 150 years ago and I lost track of him. And then all of a sudden, bam, there he is on the channel and I get I catch up with him a little bit and then he comes with this comment about moving that half bath, which so many of you had pointed out, and then his solution was put it under the stairs going up to the upstairs out of the garage. Brilliant idea, Dave. Thanks a lot. And I am burning with curiosity about your 35 years spent in Japan. But the third individual that just has to be mentioned provided a professional grade architectural review of those plans just of his own, just because he wanted to. And it's Jesse Emery. And he works for one of the big architectural firms in Portland. He did a complete red line drawing just off the elevations. He extended the opportunity for me to send the plans to him so he could pull them apart line by line. He was appreciative and frankly, um, complimentary of the work that Gary Fadness and I had done. And he, he brought some wonderful suggestions. Man, it was great. Kelly and I stopped by his office on our way to Seattle a couple of months ago and he welcomed us, welcomed us in and he unlocked the building and in we went and it was terrific. Jesse, thanks, man. I, I, I just really appreciate the things that you opened my eyes to about, about architecture and big time property development with high rises and renovations of entire city blocks and let me just say this, if there's been any time in this Spec House series or in any of my other videos about construction that I've given you the impression that I thought that architects were somehow superfluous or overrated or difficult to deal with and therefore probably easily avoided, I was out of line. I have a new appreciation for the breadth and the depth of the knowledge that those people can have. Now, that's not to say that there are not prima donnas amongst them, because I know there are prima donnas among framers, I know there are prima donnas among blacksmiths, I know there are prima donnas among jazz musicians, and so one would expect that you might find one now and then in the architectural field. But in terms of knowing detail and having a global understanding of the entire scope of a job, I have a new appreciation for what the people who are functioning in that part of the construction world bring to construction. You know, you can have anything you want in life, but you can't have everything you want in life. And every choice you make that pertains to a house plan or a boat or a hunting trip 
or pretty much anything else that you set your mind on doing, every choice you made is going to exclude some other possible choices. But there comes a time when you have to choose or not choosing becomes its own choice and usually that's way more expensive. So we have settled on what we think are for us the best solutions to these construction problems. Now keep in mind that we're building this for a particular lot at a particular time for a particular purpose and that is to sell. We've just got to sell this thing. And I've received a couple really heartfelt and well-informed comments about, Scott, are you sure you may have missed the market? I mean, this market could flip and then what are you gonna do? And yeah, I know, but doggone it, we have put our hand to the plow and we're not looking back and we've made what seemed to us to be the best choices we can make for the people that we hope we're building this for. Parking out here, garage. Walk by the front of the house, probably a sidewalk through the narrow front yard, turn up probably two steps up onto the porch, here's the front door. Jesse, one of the first things he said was put another side light, a, a side light on the other side of that door entry system, so we did, you step in, you are in a foyer that now opens into an office instead of a dining room. What a great suggestion, came from several of you. That means that this wall no longer has a door and can receive kitchen cabinets, way better. We still haven't decided which one of these will be a closet, whether one or the other or one is needed for HVAC, we haven't decided yet. We don't have to decide that yet. No change over here, but a big change coming down the hall. That nasty little half bath is gone. And instead you have a walk-in pantry from the kitchen area, bam. This window is wider. This covered porch outside is wider. The kitchen is somewhat readjusted on this drawing, but there is a nice alteration coming, which we will tease you with right now and just point out that it will provide an opportunity for some more hand forged iron and copper work. Coming out into the garage area, the direction of ascent on the stair has been changed. So an immediate left coming out of the kitchen will take you upstairs and it made room for the half bath under the stairs intruding slightly into the garage. Way better, way better. Pocket door facilitates this. Open the door, there will be one step down into the garage. We shifted this door down to make room for a workbench right there, which I think makes sense. We may, we may play with the location of the window, but that's so incidental, it's scarcely worth even pointing out but I had to point it out. All right, let's go to the second floor, floor plan. From down below, open all the way down, come up the stairs. Nice little touch that Jesse suggested. Pop out a little alcove here. Not a big deal, not a lot of work, but changes the feeling walking into the master bedroom and changed the handing on the door. By swinging the door the other way, not only does it not interfere with the door into the closet, but it sort of increases privacy. You know, the, the master bedroom from time to time needs a little privacy and there's gonna be kids all over up here and so privacy and a little dimension in the hall is just better. Here is a big, a big change that several of you picked up on, that we didn't need to locate the bathroom to accommodate the plumber. Throw the bathroom over there where it can get a view. So we did that. We still are gonna play with these windows a little bit. They'll be more symmetric, located a little differently. That's incidental to the, to the process at this point. Walk-in closet, virtually the same in terms, of space, in terms of space. Not huge, but certainly adequate. Coming down the hall, we pulled out that little Jack and Jill dividing wall that was right here. It was fairly pointless. I think that the linen swapped. I think we had the linen opening into the bathroom. Now it's opening into the common area. That's better. This little area remains about the same. I've got that crossed out. Oh, I see. Recommendation from Caitlin Wilson was to make this little desk square and actually extend this little partition, which I think is a great idea. There'll be a little railing right here. I'm not sure how that'll work. And now we get down to the recommendation about the utility room and thank you very much, ma'am. I wish I had your name, but I do not. So we now have hanging room and folding room and just more space and this floor is gonna be recessed so we can put a floor drain in the middle of the space. So when, not if, but when the washer fails, the water will go outside or into the waste and vent system or someplace where it won't cause a huge insurance claim. We're back to the different direction on the ascent. These lines indicate a lot of very tricky ceiling lines from the tricky roof, but we will figure that out when the time comes. And the bonus room is not huge, but it's adequate. 
and we increase the window size to increase the light. You can make me look better. We got lots of comments, either for or against the columns. But the proportion was not right then. We think the proportion is right now. Reduce the bottoms, increase the tops. I like the way it lays in there. We went ahead and drew in what we had always been intending to have in place, but just didn't have in the rendering, and that is the exposed rafter tails, corbels, classic craftsman motif. Lots of you have warned me about a water collection hazard right in here where this garage roof dies into the side wall of the upstairs, and you're right, it's a problem. That'll be solved with crickets or or um, membrane roofing or flashing, but probably a cricket so that gravity can do nothing to bring water into the house ever. Uh, change that I think I can attribute. So this change was Jesse's. The, this side light was Jesse's change. Several of the changes inside and the uh, shingles on the side wall of the dormers. Looks way better than a lap siding configuration up there. Jesse suggested that these windows get taller. They will be they will start probably 22 inches off the floor in the living room and go nearly to the ceiling. Great big glass panels. We're gonna, these are the upstairs bedroom windows that are gonna be made more symmetric. That, you know, I don't know if this mullion will go away or what, but that's gonna be played with. And I think that is pretty much it. There's a, there is, let's see if I can find it, a change. Since we have decided to go with a crawl space, and thank you for all of your input on that, we've made a change here in that the stem walls are going to be retaining. I'm going to take some of the grade that comes out of the crawl space and backfill up against a stem wall in the backyard. So that coming out of the house, the backyard's so narrow, it is so narrow and it's going to be coming right out against that five foot retaining wall, that coming out at essentially floor level is going to be convenient, it's going to be comfortable, and it's going to shrink the height of that retaining wall in the backyard from five feet down to about maybe 40 inches, perhaps as low as 36 inches, which is going to feel much better with the terrace that's, that's behind there for planting and landscape. We're going to, it's a variable depth on the crawl space. We're going to go a little deeper over here for some mechanical reasons. Take some of this material, raise the grade in the front. It's a semi-balanced grade approach. It relieves some of the loading on the lot with some of the excavation. We increased a couple of the overhangs for some passive solar gain and to keep the water away from the from the side envelope of the house. We're gonna to use top flange hangers on the TJI systems so that the hangers will just hang right off of the mud sill. And I think that that, you know, we're back to having changed the proportion on these columns a little bit, all to the good. So, I'm meeting with Dave Thomas next week, answer a few of his questions. He should have the calculations done by the first of the year and get them submitted. We'll have a permit in our hands by let's say March, should be fairly safe with that and be ready to break ground when the weather gets good. We don't want to be tracking mud on and off of our lot and stringing it up and down the street and annoying the neighbors and plugging the storm drains. So we're going to wait till the weather is predictably decent, which coincides with good filming weather. So with this status, public information now, let me give you just a little more behind the scenes update. It's a wonderful and crazy time around here and let me give you just a short list of the things that have been going on. Number one, Nate is closing in on getting his project done in Mesa. You can check some of that content out on the channel. You may have already watched it. There's going to be some more coming. If, you would, if there's any particular thing, you know, connected with his storage facility that you're interested in, you know, post it. We'll see if we can get to it. And we're going to need to do some of that because our content over the next two or three months is going to be we're going to have to be creative because right now we are concentrating hook, line, and sinker on a really big video project for us that's related to this channel, like closely related. More information on that to come. It's going to make it a little bit more challenging to keep the output pace up that we've had set of two a week here now for, I guess, almost two years. That may lag just a little but just kind of hang on because it's a temporary lag. It's a lag while the other, other ducks are lining up because along with finishing his project, Nate's in the process of moving up here. Did I mention that? Now that's not a small thing. He's got three, three 
little kids. They are uprooting from Mesa and heading north specifically to do this with everything that that implies. So between the move and the storage unit and the content here in the shop and the groundwork that I'm doing with engineers and permits and beginning to enter into agreements with subcontractors and vendors and spreading the word out in internet world about what's going on here, we are running pretty hard. There have been several of you who have been voicing real concern about what looks like an eminent downturn in the housing market. In fact, as we make this video, it's pretty clear that that downturn has begun. Now, my crystal ball doesn't work very well. Nate's works somewhat better than mine, but we are both very conservative about these things. In fact, I've been caught in three um, downturns, economic downturns with property for sale. The last one in 2008, 2009 hurt me. And so it's on my mind, but thank you for your concern. Here's what we would like you to keep in mind, even as you continue to voice these warnings, is that this is not a typical spec house project. Yes, we have to build it on budget. And yes, we're hoping for a sale at some sort of a price that will, that will um, work for everyone. But what we are really doing is building a community here and trying to provide value to that community the community that's watching me right now. As our economic reality does whatever it's going to do, if you have an urge to help in this way with what could be a downturn, here's how you can do it. Spread the word. Let people know that this is going on. Let people know that there is an in-depth example of residential construction on YouTube, inch by inch, blow by blow, phase by phase, agreement by agreement, that probably will be interesting to some folks. And the more people that can access this and get value from it, the more successful this will be and frankly, the more survivable it will be for us. There's another thing that we are doing since we are both conservative in our approach to these things that will make this more survivable regardless of what the market does. And that is we're selling everything that we can sell in terms of other properties and other assets so that we don't have to borrow the money to build this house. Now that doesn't mean that we're flush with cash and that money's not gonna be a problem. In fact, it may mean that somewhere in this project we may have to take some sponsorships that pertain to the project in order to build the project. We don't know, but it's on the table. The thing that always cause, causes shipwrecks in speculative real estate development is debt, is leverage. And to the limit of our ability, we're avoiding that. I hope we can avoid it. If we can avoid it, the market can do whatever the market wants to do, and we will still get this series out there for the whole world to see, which is, after all, why we've taken on this project. There's another key to surviving speculative real estate development, and that is to not approach these projects where only one outcome will facilitate survival. What I mean is you've got to have plan A and plan B and if possible, plan C and D. So that if one of those for some set of circumstances beyond your control, like a real estate market becomes impossible, you can go another way. And we do have a plan B and a plan C um, that would be very doable with this house if we're not able to sell it when we want to sell it at a price that is survivable, that'll enable us to just stand by until the situation changes and be okay. So. Thank you for your concern. Thanks for your input. I hope that you understand that your comments are carefully, carefully considered. And Nate and I often have phone conversations. Hey, did you see that comment today? What do you think about that? This, I think, epitomizes one of the really, really unique things of what's going on here. There's a pool of wisdom and experience out there that I don't think exists anywhere else. Okay, so here's the last thing. I'm gonna ask if you're true friends of the channel, and I promise this is the last thing, this video's out of hand, is that if you're not already on our email list, you go get on it. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. Now, I'm not gonna bombard you with emails, and I'm gonna hang on to your email address. I'm not, I'm not sharing that information. But if the time ever comes that YouTube gets tired of me or we get tired of YouTube, I wanna be able to get back in touch with you. It would be important for us to be able to maintain contact regardless of what the internet does or what YouTube decides or anything else. 
it would provide a, a stronger connection so that, who knows, fill in the blank. If that happens, I have a chance of reaching back out, connecting you with where we're going to be posting this content because we intend to make this content from now on.